Hi everyone, my name is Ron Mason and this is Cosmic Neighbors. We're going to dive into a bunch of UFO sightings, cases from way back when to the modern day. We're also going to talk about alien life, is there, isn't there, but we're going to get into all that. We're going to have a great time, so I thank you for joining me on this journey. So, to start things off, what question has everyone asked or thought about? It's a question I've been asking and thinking about as far back as I can remember. Are we alone in the universe? If not, where are they? Are they already here? Before we get into where are they, we need to know what we're working with in regards to the size of space, aka the universe. Let's start with our own galaxy, the Milky Way. When you hear people say, well, if they are so advanced and been around for so long, then why haven't they visited us, visited us yet? All right, let me just say, space is enormous. I mean, which is a huge understatement. It's so big that our brains cannot fully comprehend it. I mean, scientists can give you their own comparison and analogies, but in the end, I have actually had headaches from thinking so hard and deep. I got to a point where I just couldn't go any further. Here's an example that will give you an idea how big our galaxy is. That's right, just the Milky Way galaxy, not the whole universe. In August 1977, we launched the Voyager 2 space probe whose mission was to explore the outer planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. After its flyby of Neptune in 1989, it was done with our planets and was headed to interstellar space. Voyager 2 launched in 1977. Its travel speed has been between 55,000 and 60,000 kilometers per hour, which translates into 35,000 to 38,000 miles per hour. But let's just say 35,000 miles per hour for now. So let's think about that for a minute. Voyager 2 has been traveling at speeds for over 30,000 miles per hour for over, 30, um, for over 43 years straight, and it finally made it out of our solar system and into interstellar space on November 5th, 2018. And that's only our solar system, not our galaxy, just the solar system, 43 years. So more perspective on how big space is, and you can literally get a headache from attempting to wrap your brain around it, scientists now have now said the Milky Way has around 200 billion stars. It has been said that there are around 2 trillion galaxies in the universe, but that number has been challenged and the mainstream scientific area has said it's more like 200 billion galaxies. Nobody knows uh, where the number may be for sure, but in my opinion, I believe there's well over 500 billion galaxies, but let's just say 200 billion for argument's sake. Think of that number. If galaxies average 200 billion stars and there are 200 billion galaxies, then we are talking mind-bending numbers now. Let's do the math. If the number stators are accurate, and we, we will multiply 200 billion galaxies times 200 billion stars, which equals 40 sextillion stars. I mean, 1 billion is an enormous number. 1 trillion is just insane. But 22 zeros in front of that number 4 is just laughable. It looks and sounds fake. Now, keep in mind with all those numbers I just shared with you, stars are being born every day. If we can use our galaxy as the model for other galaxies, then 400 million stars are born every day, which adds up to 150 billion new stars every year. That's wow. That's just, it's just insane. I mean, if you really think about it, 400 billion stars a day. It's just 400 million stars a day. It's just insane. So to know there are 200 billion stars in the Milky Way and our sun being one of them, do you think or believe that our star is the only one that has life around it out of 200 billion other stars in our galaxy? And I'm talking about our galaxy, not the universe yet. We're talking about the Milky Way, which our solar system resides in. Right? Also, the stars um, we see outside um, you could, uh, that you can see with the naked eye are in our galaxy. 
uh, we can see galaxies uh, like our closest neighbor Andromeda, but the stars we see in the sky are within our own galaxy. They're not like outside, the, when you think the universe, it's called the observable universe. From where we are in the Milky Way, we can only see with the naked eye stars within our galaxy. And like I said, we can see the Andromeda galaxy and some of them are really clear nights, depending on where you are. But um, it, it's, it's, it's insane. And, and by the way, we are on a collision course with the Andromeda galaxy and will eventually collide. However, that won't be for a few million years, so you could just take it easy right now. This serves another example of the size of space. Galaxies are so big and their stars are so far apart that it's possible when the Milky Way and Andromeda collide, none of the stars will collide with each other. It sounds crazy that two galaxies collide and do not result in any stars colliding which eat with each other, but stars are many light years apart and it's not only likely but probable that no stars collide. However, it doesn't mean stars cannot collide with each other. So I don't want you to hold me to it. But you have to think about it. Stars are light years apart. So there's always a chance that we, they don't collide with each other. But anyway, that's a story for another time. And remember, we're only talking about the Milky Way, uh, Milky Way galaxy at the moment. There are hundreds of billions of galaxies in the universe and trillions and trillions of stars. This brings us to the Fermi paradox. But before I get to that, I would really see what your thoughts are. So please comment below. And if you like this video, please give it a like. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button. And also don't forget, share this with your friends. Let's grow this channel so we can have fun because I definitely want to get your input. All right, the Fermi paradox. The Fermi paradox, named after Italian-American physicist Enrico Fermi, is the apparent contradiction between the lack of evidence for extraterrestrial civilizations and various high estimates for their probability. In other words, people can say there is no hard evidence of extraterrestrial life out there, but on the other hand, the universe is so big that there is a really strong reason to believe there is life out there. Me personally, I believe there is not only life out there, but an abundance of it. It's okay to disagree with me. It's okay not to believe it at all. We all have our own thoughts on this subject. But I will tell you why I believe there is more than a civilization or two um, than our own. Earlier, I gave you some examples of how big our galaxy is. And those numbers are just ridiculous. But when we get into the light years conversation, you will understand why I believe what I believe. For example, when you look in the night sky and see those beautiful bright stars, some of them are planets and many of them are galaxies. Of course, there are many stars out there, but these stars are so far away, they may not even exist anymore. Our sun is 93 million miles away and it takes eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach the earth. Except for what we can see in our solar system, everything else are many light years away. I'm going to get that math in a simple breakdown shortly. I'm gonna to get to that. I guess what I'm trying to say to anyone who says, if aliens are so advanced, why haven't they visited us uh, at all? Well, I have a few responses to that. Number one, I believe they have been visiting us for some time. With the thousands of sightings and witnesses to personal encounters, they can't be all faked or all lies. I know that's a very simple answer. Sometimes a simple answer is all that's needed. Number two, they can live in star systems so far away that even their technology would take them some serious time to get here. And that's if they are purposely coming here and not passing by and out of some cosmic luck happen to see our planet. The latest convenient response is that there is life out there. It is so far away, it's like we are by ourselves anyway. That does not make sense. Life is life. Whether life is 100 million light years away, it still means there is life out there. I know one of the first things that comes to mind are wormholes. Yes, the theory is very possible and it probably does happen. But when you see the light years on paper, you might just start thinking, um, okay, yeah, he's got a point there. <laughs> so, 
Let's finish this episode with some really mind-bending numbers. And it's like, like not like the numbers that we went over already aren't already mind-bending. But before I tell you about light years, we first need to know how fast the speed of light is. The speed of light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second. That's equal to 186,000 uh, miles per second. So let's do a little math to figure out how far one light year is. So we know the speed of light travels at 300,000 kilometers per second or 186,000 miles per second. So let's say the letter C equals the speed of light. We then do the following. We'll do C times 60 times 60 times 24 times 365. Those are seconds, minutes, hours, and days. And, here, and here's the crazy thing. The answer to that is, so one light year equals 9.461 trillion kilometers or 5.88 trillion miles. That is one light year. The closest star is obviously our own sun at 93 million miles, but outside the nearest star is Alpha Centauri. It's part of a star system. It's 4.37 light years away. From Earth, that would be four, a little bit over four quadrillion kilometers or 2.6, basically, quadrillion miles. <laughs> That's our closest star. So just remember, all the stars we can see with the naked eye are in our Milky Way galaxy because the radius of the Milky Way galaxy is 52,850 light years. What is that? And this is, wait till you see this number. Wait till you see this number. That equals... One quintillion kilometers, or 621 quadrillion miles, our Milky Way galaxy. That's what we're talking about here, not even the universe. It's like a grain of sand in the, it's, it's I'm telling you, mind-bending. If you're wondering why I spent this first episode explaining uh, the size of space, it's because in the coming episodes, it will allow us to address questions or doubts with a better understanding uh, of what we're working with. You know, it's, it's so when, you know, again, like when people say, oh, why haven't they come here or go back and forth? Knowing sizes, that will give you a much better perspective. All right. So with that being said, I really want to thank you for joining me on this journey. In future episodes, we are going to go over some sightings and cases that date back to the 1500s up to the modern day. So if you like this video, please hit the like button and leave a comment. I welcome all feedback. Don't forget, please click the subscribe button and then click the little notification bell right next to it and click all. So this will let you know when new episodes have been posted as well as updates on the channel. Also, please share this video. Sharing is the best way to grow this channel, which means it will only get better and better. So I want to thank you all so much for joining me for this first episode. I truly appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. Till next time, I'm Ron Mason in search of our cosmic neighbors. Take care.